Good evening. It's Pastor Todd again as we continue in our Bible study that we have entitled Enoch, Elijah, and Jude. Now we've already talked about Enoch. We talked about Enoch, the couple places that we find Enoch in the Bible, in Genesis and the book of Hebrews, and mentioned in the book of Jude. Um, we haven't spoke about that, but we will tonight. Um, we have spoke about Elijah, and Elijah is the one out of the three that is the more known. Uh, he's the one he, we have more information about. Uh, we have a lot of information about Elijah and what he did for the northern kingdom of, of Israel. And now we have Jude. Now, if you try to go to your Bible and you try to find Jude, you might not be able to find much about Jude. You might find the word Judas. Uh, you might find... Uh, other words that he possibly could have had kind of like a nickname. But you're not going to find a lot about Judas or Jude. But tonight we're going to look at three things that we know about him for sure. We're going to look at a few things that could be correct about him, but we do not know. And then we're going to look at how we can tie him to Enoch and Elijah. But let's pray. Father, be with us as we open your word and as we look to find what it is you would have us find in this study. Father, we ask that you would be with us as we look into your word, as we read your word, and as we share what we feel that you have placed upon our heart. Father, be with our people. Father, wrap your arms around them and let them know that you are with them. And Father, it's in Jesus' name that we come. Amen. Book of Jude. Now, also in the book of Jude, I don't tell you a chapter because there's only one. So when I mention a number, that is the verse. And so, call your attention to the first couple verses in the book of Jude. This letter is from Jude, a slave of Jesus Christ and brother of James. I'm writing to all who have been called by God the Father, who loves you and keeps you safe in the care of Jesus Christ. And may God give you more and more mercy, peace, and love and we're going to stop right there for the time being so let's kind of look at the facts i'm going to give you three facts and then i'm going to give you some questions that we might have and then we're going to look at the information then a few things individually number one who is jude fact number one a slave or servant of Jesus Christ. Now, when we look at that, there's another word that needs to be used that is more grammatically as well as from the Greek correct. And that word would be bond servant. Bond servant. Slave is not exactly right. Servant doesn't cover everything, but it's a really good word. But the word bond servant kind of brings everything together. But we'll come that, back to that. Number one, that's one thing that we know. Number two, he is a brother to James. You might say, which James? Because in the New Testament, we have record of three James. So which one? Well, we know that he is not the brother of John. And we know that he is not James, son of Alphaeus, which is a disciple. And so the James evidently that he is speaking of is he is the brother of James, the brother of Jesus, which makes Jude 
the half-brother of Jesus. Some people will even use the term step son of Jesus. We'll come back to that also. And then the third thing, the third thing is he is the author of the book of Jude. We know that we're talking about the same guy. We know that we're talking about the same guy. And then number four, he is a leader in the early church. You might say, how do we know that? Well, it's very simple. He has a book in the New Testament. It's just common sense. Because if you go and you begin to look at all the books of the New Testament, you're going to find all these well-known people, all these people that we know tons about. And then we have Jude. So there was something about him. And we're going to look at that further in just a minute. If we speculate and try to find out more about him, of course, here we go. First off, which is kind of in both categories, uh, he's the brother of Jesus. Okay? Number two, Jude might have a nickname. And if he has a nickname, it could be Thaddeus. Does that strike a bell? You begin to look at the list of disciples in Matthew chapter 10 and where on that list do you find Thaddeus? You find Thaddeus. Basically, the word Thaddeus means breast child. Now, that might sound funny, but what that basically means is it means that he was a fellow that had a very good, gentle heart about him, and it means that he was a gentle man. And so this is not the kind of guy that would want to be in the forefront of anything. He's the kind of guy that works in the back. And then he was a skeptic. And how do we know that? If you go to the book of John chapter 7, what we begin to find is we begin to find the brothers of Jesus. And we begin to find them and we begin to talk about, read about them. And as we're reading about them, what we're understanding is that they're encouraging Jesus to go up to one of the festivals. It was actually called the Festival of the Shelters that was going on. They encourage him to go up there. And then we read where it says, and they didn't believe Jesus was who he said he was. You see, he was their brother. And at this time, it's kind of like they wanted to prove a point to him. They wanted him maybe to get caught. And Judas was one of his brothers. And so we look at that. Another speculation that I'm not even listening because we know that it is not correct is one of the reasons people think he may have a nickname, for instance, Thaddeus, is because of the very simple fact that everyone tried to distance themselves from Judas Iscariot. But we know that this was not Judas Iscariot. And so that's why I didn't list him, but that is one of the things that you will find. So, what you find is you find four things about Jude or Judas or Thaddeus. You find four things about him that we know for sure. And you find three things that might be. But there is one thing that deserves a little more attention, and that is number one in the facts. A servant or bondservant of Jesus Christ. The greatest description that anyone could have, whether it be an angel or whether it be a person, is to say that we are a servant of Jesus. Notice that Jude does not say he is the brother of Jesus. Notice that Jude does not say he is an apostle of Jesus. He just says, I'm a servant of Jesus 
and I am the brother of James. And you might say, well, why would he say that? Because his brother James was well known. James is the author of the book of James. And James is also, James is also the person that turns out to be the Bishop of Jerusalem. And so he has a leading place in the church. And so everybody knows who James is, but very few people know who Jude is. And if he wasn't an apostle, he would never have used the term disciple or apostle. But he did use the term servant. As we said earlier, the correct word would be bond servant, meaning that someone sets aside all of his rights of who he is to serve another, not serving out of obligation, but as a slave, but choosing, but choosing this life. Servant doesn't capture it all. That's why a slave does work in there. But the Apostle Paul kind of lays it out best of all when we look at him. In ancient times, slaves were purchased or born into a slave family and served the master until they died or until the master decided to free them. Some slaves developed such a close loving relationship with, the, with their master that they never wanted to leave. And that's the way Paul always considered himself. Paul considered himself to be a slave of Jesus because he never wanted to leave him. But there's five things about a servant that I want to call your attention to here this evening for just a moment. A servant of Christ knows whom is the king. Somebody else is not the king. They're not the king. But Jesus is king. A servant of Christ seeks his will in all things, never trying to think what's best for me, but what is best for the kingdom. A servant of Christ puts into practice all they learn about pleasing the Lord. You know, that term I'm using in this one and in the next one, but let's talk for a moment about pleasing. We live our lives and some people try to please somebody. Some people try to please their employers. Some people try to please their spouses. Some people try to please their parents. Some people try to please the public. You're always trying to please somebody. A servant is trying to please Jesus first and foremost. A servant of Christ does their work humbly and selfishly, desiring only to please their master, never looking to say, look what I've done, but looking to say, look what Jesus has done. And then lastly, a servant of Christ considers their lives on earth as a brief time of preparation for eternity. And that just kind of says it all right there. We know that Jude was a servant of God. We know he was a bond servant of God. We know that. And now we have looked at what it means to be a servant. So we know very little about this person. But that actually tells us something about him. He was more concerned with the task given to him by Christ than he was about being known. And I believe that this was the brother of Jesus in some fashion, whether it was a husband later that Mary had married, that this was his son, or whether this was actually Joseph's son. He was a brother to Jesus. He could have used that but he wouldn't. It teaches us 
something about him. But there's something else. Evidently, the apostles were concerned that maybe some people would not give the book of Jude the authority that it should receive. So if you go to the book of 2 Peter, you're going to find that the book of 2 Peter and the book of Jude, they go together. And the reason for that is evidently the apostle Peter wrote 2 Peter from the book of Jude. It was a way to give Jude the authority that all the other books of the New Testament had. The book of Jude is extremely important because the book speaks to the apostasy in the church. Apostasy meaning the abandonment of Christian faith. People were falling away from the church. We find out as we read on in verse 3 of the book of Jude. Dear friends, I had been eagerly planning to write to you about the salvation we all share. But now I find that I must write about something else, urging you to defend the faith that God has entrusted once for all time to his holy people. You see, Jude was wanting to write about something else. He was wanting to write about salvation, an uplifting book. But then he finds something in the church that the Holy Spirit gives him direction to write about. And it is the apostasy, the falling away. The falling away. You can call it a book of prophecy if you would like. And it is, but more specifically, it is a book written to believers about the trying times the church will have to endure. And I hope that that makes you go, what? Because we're in them. We're there. We're in something that no one else has ever seen. We're there. But then, how does Jude tie in with Enoch and Elijah? And as we come to the end of our study, I'd like to call your attention to verses 13 and 14 in the book of Jude. Enoch, who lived in the seventh generation after Adam, prophesied about these people. What people? the people that are trying to divide the church, the people that are leaving the church, the people that are doing immoral things, but trying to say, oh, well, it's okay. That's who Enoch is talking about. Prophesied about these people. He said, listen, the Lord is coming with countless thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on the people of the world. He will convict every person of all the ungodly things they have done and for all the insults that ungodly sinners have spoken about him. Jude tells us something about Enoch that we don't know. We haven't read that anywhere else. It's not anywhere else except in the book of Jude. And the book of Jude is a book kind of about prophecy, more about apostasy. And so when we begin to look at it, we see that Enoch, Elijah, and Jude all have aspects to their lives. All the way from the book of Genesis to the book of Jude, which is the last book before we get to the book of Revelation. From the beginning to the end what we find is a connection to end time prophecy. There is our tie. There is our connection. As we look to next, week, next week's study, we will be examining the main points of the book of Jude. As we do this, it will even tie Enoch, Elijah, and Jude together even more. This will end this Bible study series. And I was wondering, 
Do you have an idea for a Bible study? Maybe you've been reading recently and something jumped out to you. Maybe something dealing with the coronavirus has brought up questions. Maybe our next Bible study could deal with just questions that people have about different things associated with the Bible. I don't know, but what I wanted to do was I wanted to ask if there was anything that anyone has that you would like for us to look at during this time. I know that I want to continue to depend on the Father to direct us in our study. But if you have an idea, send me a text, give me a call. Love you all and have a blessed day.